Hi everybody, Happy New Year, hope you're all well. Welcome to 2023 and in the words of, I think it's Joey from Friends, how you doing? Um, so I hope you're all okay. So I'm going to launch in the title of this video today is No One Dies From Love. No One Dies From Love. So I'm going to just leap straight in here and say that there are many frequencies of love experienced by us as sentient beings or as human beings and those frequencies are experienced through different wave bands or sound waves and I could almost say different octaves depending on one's consciousness it depends on how one can receive the transmission of that love, the experience of that love and ultimately live it and evolve through it. So if one is or has been entrenched in one's pain body, mental body, old love and relationship programming, one will perceive love very differently from someone who is perceiving from the octave and the higher consciousness of one's evolved metaphysical heart. So if one is perceiving love from one's emotional pain body or mental body and perceiving the relationships from there and one's hurts and one's wounding and one's life experience and one's programming about what relationships and love would be one would react in a relationship or a connection with someone according to that and of course this is where immense triggering and projection comes in where somebody will will trigger and then project all of their their stuff or all of their shit onto the other person or people that they are in connection or relationship to. Um, largely unconsciously, largely not realising that this is something that they are doing, because of that programming and because of their perception of relationship and because of their life experiences when they got hurt before, things that happened before, they will come from this wave band or sound wave and interact in relationships accordingly so in other words most of their interaction in a relationship will be according to that wounding and what happened in a way in previous relationships um it's it would have shaped their perception of that their childhood would have shaped their perception of relationships as well and their state of consciousness on this will come from there so how much of this is still going on on planet earth at the moment when earth and its population are going through a rapidly accelerating ascension reality and ascension process and if you're watching this channel you'll know what ascension is but ascension basically is the the escalation elevation of one's inner consciousness to one's higher state where where one is is in the flow with one's higher self where one is much more conscious where one is starting to begin to create their reality or co-create their reality quite consciously how much of this unconscious love unconscious reaction um how much of this un unconscious relationships are left on earth and still there are you know there are a lot because we have been building through this process of ascension for a number of years but it's really tipped over to the mass population only recently in in terms of that so you know i like talking in sizes of energy and percentages of energy so how much 
or how many of the population are within that state of relationship at the moment which is um, projected and programmed and um, sort of upbringing around what relationships are and wounding and, and all of these things how, how much in percentage um, immediately what I'm picking up on and um, when I'm saying this is around about um, 60 to 65 percent um, that's not a surprise to me um, because like I say we're although we've been building through an ascension process for years it's really really becoming evident in the mass population only recently so what I'm saying here is 60 to 65 percent of the earth population is still running their consciousness largely unconscious um, a huge area that this shows up in is the relationship with other people and the relationship with oneself at the heart of that um, and so planetary wise 60 to 65 percent are still coming from there now to various degrees varying degrees in there because it's not just all black or all white or all hot or all cold or all moon or all sun um, there are various degrees on that ladder of consciousness um, so some people will be completely entrenched in the old relationship paradigm of their consciousness and have been all their lives and others will be um, having an elevation of their consciousness within it so they will suddenly be starting to look at their relationships differently question them differently stuff will start coming up um, it's usually a, a very uncomfortable process um, anyone who says it isn't is a liar um, as you know this is an experiential channel which means I only talk teach share channel etc through my own personal experience which is um, you know there's quite a lot of that now not just within working within this with 22 years but um, I've had a lot of life experience in, in regards to all of this stuff um, but I also talk from experience with the thousands of clients I've worked with over a 22 year period that are going through various degrees of this stuff and I mean on all things energy as you know I don't just um, work within people's relationships you know I'm working on all sorts of levels you know healing channeling paranormal you know mediumship if you look at my website um lindy at raising reality.com you'll see that um so there's a there's a chunk of the earth's so many billion population that are still coming from there but various from varying degrees so some are completely entrenched in it are totally immersed in it and are highly unlikely not to come out of that immersion in this lifetime because they're so entrenched within it um, that's not a criticism that's not a judgment it's just what it is um, but then there's other chunks within that that are already questioning looking at the relationship between themselves with themselves looking at the relationships they're in with other people obviously it shows up in your primary relationships first someone that you're married to living with or boyfriend girlfriend um, but then it will show up in let's say uh, other relationships like family relationships or work colleagues or friendships and things like that and I mean I brought videos out years ago I mean you'll see that from my YouTube channel if you track back to the oldest videos which is sort of seven eight years maybe older than that now um, where I was talking about what you know when people awaken why does their a lot of their primary relationships fall apart and it's because of this it's because you know one of you your your consciousness has raised and the other one it hasn't or all this projected stuff comes up um, and it, it's very true that as one holds more light quota or one is more conscious within themselves that that will trigger very much so without one trying the unconscious repressed matter or let's say shadow or let's say polarized or let's say the unconscious within another person that they're connected with um, so that light like a lighthouse is bright and it shines up and it illuminates the shadow within oneself but when with you know the shadow within one's primary relationships in those people and if those people 
aren't aware of that or what's going on, there can be massive triggering and rejection going on and it will be hurled in the direction of the lighthouse. So um, again, you know, I'm harping back to this because one's relationship with oneself and others is primary to all human life. I mean, all human life. It is a massively central part, main part of being human. How you are in relationship with yourself to yourself and how you are in relationship with others and how conscious or unconscious you are will depend on where you are on that scale. You know, whether you are largely subject to immense triggering and programming and the old stuff and your old wounding and your old life experience in terms of um, relationships and a lot of it tracks also back to inner child and, and childhood and where you are you know how conscious you are when you connect with somebody else and you know I know again from my own experience you know my um what I'm going to say is that, you know, one would, ex generally, let's say generally, one would expect that you would, the more conscious you are, generally, you're going to connect with more conscious people. And that is true to a certain degree, and it does bring a smile to my face, because there are, sometimes there are little curveballs that are thrown in. So it's like, um, it's like, um, it's like a bowling alley or it's like a bowling rink. You know, you'll be going along and you won't expect a bowling ball to hit you or to hit those um, skittles. But this bowling ball comes out of left field or I say sometimes a grenade is thrown in out of left field. And, uh, you know, a bit of a curveball that one didn't expect to come in that form. And you can connect with a person or people that are let's say much more unconscious than you and um again that, that won't be random and for no reason uh, uh, you know these curveballs come in sometimes they almost come in as a, almost like a um, like a sort of um, i was going to say a sort of test but not exactly a test it is along those lines but almost like um a thermometer you know taking the temperature of how far you've come and are you going to recognize this and are you going to buy into um by um not really your own free will choice free will is only free will when you're conscious of it um are you going to slide into something that's largely unconscious again when you've come out of those unconscious patterns you know are you going to slide into it again is there a little bit of something in you that had to be played out or finished off or completed or wasn't properly healed are you going to kind of slide in to that again or are you going to choose you know conscious connection conscious to yourself conscious to another and again there is no right or wrong there's no judgment on this everybody is, is up and down these scales and you know dipping in and out of these scales and it's part of your human evolution so, of course, the other side of this fence where I'm largely talking about unconscious relationships becoming more conscious. And, and let's say, you know, they have to now because the, the planetary frequency is at such a pitch now. And people's energy is being turned up to such a pitch now, like a dimmer switch, but being turned up full and bright. That one cannot sustain without unbearable pain and suffering these largely unconscious triggers and patterns anymore it's becoming absolutely untenable for people to do this um, myself included it, it's, it causes immense amount of emotional and physical sometimes pain to sustain that one can't do it one has to be um, living the truth frequency living their authenticity living their true authentic consciousness of who they are otherwise it becomes un unbearable um and more so more now than ever before because the frequency of the planet and the pitch has gone up and the overall general pulse that is coming out the ascension pulse shall we say is that 
one has to live from a more conscious frequency in order to stay earthbound and in order to to go through this ascension process you know one you can't in a way have a foot in both worlds you know you have to make a very significant soul or spiritual decision within oneself and and it and it gets to a, a point where it's almost like you don't have a choice because when you're aligned with that you can't be what you're not aligned with and you can't remain with what you're not aligned with you can maybe dip your toe in the water and do a little dance of non-alignment with somebody but you can't do it for, for too long before it becomes really difficult so of course the other side of the fence of this is conscious connection and connecting with people that are more conscious that that there's not that that heavy energy of resistance there it's so much easier it, it's a, it's a flow it's a flow of your consciousness like a flow of a river that is is so much easier the the resistance um, is not there in the same way the polarization is not there in the same way and there is a flow of one's energy and a flow of one's consciousness that makes it so much easier and I would say the word harmonious where there's not really um, I was going to say there's not so much effort involved it's much more natural it's just a natural flow um, flow and grow <laughs> you know what I'm like with my rhyming words flow and grow um, so it's like a flow and a grow and it's much it's much easier and we can put these in the, the category of conscious connections you know sometimes you're linked by soul sometimes you're not sometimes a soul family sometimes they're not sometimes a spiritual connection catalyst you know the list goes on um, but these connections you know come in um, various forms and you get a choice to how you connect with people according to how conscious you are and these more conscious connections you know are all about here and now they're all about what's ahead and they're all about growing actually you know both of you growing significantly and of course we're seeing plenty of evidence of that all around us now if you're aligned with that so where I was talking about different frequencies of love, um, when you're connecting with people from the heart, you're connecting with, a, you know, octaves higher in love than when you're connecting from the old programming. And um, every word I'm saying here again comes without any judgment to that um, whatsoever. I'm just simply explaining how how it is um, when you're coming from the heart and connecting with people you see you see people people's wholeness um, you see their unified complete consciousness you see the beauty within them even when they don't see the beauty within themselves you see you see them as beautiful um you connect with them as beautiful you you feel them as angelic you have this free of totally free of judgment um you could con describe it as unconditional you have this complete acceptance of the person um, let's say as they are where they are at you see them in their totality and you are connecting with them on this kind of level quite automatically and your heart feels profound care and you know I'm going to use the word love because it is love it isn't a needy, triggered, programmed love. It is a, it's like a pure, it's a purity of energy that, that comes from the metaphysical heart, which overlays your physical heart, where you're connecting with people from that level 
um, in that place of unconditionality, if you like, in that place of acceptance, in that in that purity, in that octave, it's a, it's a like a universal love. It's it's beautiful, and of course, within that octave, there is your actual. How do I describe this? There's your actual love for the person because years ago in the early stages of my evolution, it was very confusing for me because you, when you first go into the heart, of course I've been in my heart for years now and it and it's in the lead all the time now, but in the early stages for the first few years, it was kind of sometimes you're in the heart, sometimes you weren't in the heart and that, you know, sometimes that's just a part of the process. And it was confusing to me to feel that I loved everyone and everything and, you know, all this love was pouring from me. And then how can you tell if you meet someone, if you if you really are in love with them or if it's just this universal love, this cosmic love, this this love from the heart? Um, and I you know I'm no longer confused about that in any way, shape or form now because it's embedded now and it's part of who I am. So I understand it now. But it can be confusing in the early stages when people are going through this because you will feel that you love everyone and everything and you love the blade of grass, you love the tree, you love the animal, you love the person next door, you love the person down the street, you love the people you're connected with. But as time goes on, um, I'm going to call it embedded, it becomes integrated, um, templated within your field and then you clearly know and can see and feel the difference between that ever present ever present presence of love metaphysical love within one's heart cosmic love universal love you could call it unconditional love and your love for an individual or individuals plural um from your filter of all those things you can feel you know oh yes i would i you know i feel um this way about a certain individual or individuals and it, beca it doesn't become confused anymore because underneath that is the ever present presence of love universal love cosmic love unconditional love but then there is your expression of that with another human being or beings, because I've said this before, there is no limitation to love and no limitation to your expression of that love and how many people you can love from that ever never ending wellspring of love. Um, there's no limitation to that, but one has choice within that as do they want to experience something or do they want to proceed forward with something with somebody or more than one person you know one has choices within that and yet within that there is this ever presence octave of of again unconditional cosmic universal let's call it ascended love higher consciousness love um that purity, that frequency that's that's ever present there. So you've got all this going on um, with people. And, uh, you know, if we want to go on to a completely different flip side of this, and this is something I have talked about on YouTube before in the past, a number of years ago, if you track back and look at videos like Cycle of Suffering, the Unrequited Love Program, URL programs, there was one called... Um, I think there was one called 50 Shades of Twin Flame, um, things along those lines uh, where I was talking about how there had been very well orchestrated, negatively orchestrated interference in the human cycles of love. And if you ask me where those heavily orchestrated negative interferences came from or come from because they're still active it's not that they're gone at the moment um with people um 
to, to put it quite bluntly, there are negative extraterrestrial based um, technologies and um, energies uh, and entities, if you like, um, that, you know, have interfered in these cycles of human love and relationships since time began, since the fall of Lemuria and Atlantis, to take people away from their elevation into their heart and the ever-present presence of universal cosmic love and to take them into the cycles of love uh, suffering and unrequited love programs and to take them into heavily entrenched um, older forms of love programming and wounding and pain uh, in order for these energies to feed upon it because they feed upon human suffering and misery, human separation from others or human separation within oneself. And they feed upon this as, as their food source. And um, there are different levels and ranges of this because the negative extraterrestrials are at the back of it, shall we say, behind it. But then within that, there are different ranges of different things going on, like, um, you know, and some of these negative extraterrestrials have, have controls of, of the entity, negative entity wave band. Um, so sometimes they are, there are entities involved in that as well, particularly ones that feed on the suffering and fear and misery of humans. Um, but also those that feed uh, totally on just sexual energy. So sexual energy in an addictive form like the alcoholic with the bottle of drink or the chocoholic with the chocolate or the drug addict with the drug. Um, there are negative thought forms, uh, but also negative entities and, and beings um, we could call them astral beings, if you like, that feed predominantly on sexual energy. So they will hook in to one's sexual energy and just um, feed continuously and promote and stimulate that to, in order to feed. So you have those levels of things going on, which have a vested interest in keeping one... Um, out of the heart, out of the highest consciousness of relation and connection and intimacy and sex. And you also have behind them or uh, sometimes behind them, but sometimes independent of them, but sometimes they work hand in glove. One range, it's like the umbrella. And I, I brought videos out calling things for something called under the umbrella back earlier on my YouTube channel. Um, sometimes you will have the negative extraterrestrials that have um, the certain ones, I call them the disruptor energies, have control over um, waves of entity and implants and uh, curse and things like that. And other times you will have ones that, um, depending on which ones they are, are just interested in keeping this cycle of suffering going. And I bought videos out called cycle of suffering years ago and um the perception of separation or the encouragement of separation within themselves oneself so one isn't in their unity or unified consciousness um but also separation from others and will promote misery and carnage and pain and suffering and fighting and arguments and um Often they do it around they do it around family relationships um, as well and friendships, but it's extremely common within love relationships. They've been doing this, like I said, since the fall of Lemuria and Atlantis, um, simply as a food source. So they feed on and and encourage this to go on, um, not as a temporary thing, but as to go on for years for people because um, people don't realise what's happening. They think it's caused by them or caused by the other. Um, just so these negative extraterrestrials can feed, basically. Feed on um, your suffering and your misery. And they, they can promote to great lengths within this. And um, 
you know, I've seen from my own personal experience, I've lived through it, but I've seen through my own personal experience in the work that I do, that there can be interference in people's alternate realities or parallel dimensional realities, um, what you would call past lives, past, present, future are happening at the same time. But you, you would refer to them maybe as past lives. Um, I call them parallel realities or alternate realities now or um, realities running at the same time. Um, these negative extraterrestrials can interfere within those also to cause, let's say, the ripple effect through the time-space continuum, if you like, um, to affect what's happening now. I mean, it's all happening in the now, but they can affect what's happening here and now in your relationships or in your interaction with people. So it's a, it's a very interesting ball game, and, and you can see how human relationships and relationship with oneself, relationship with God, source, the universe, um, universal love, cosmic love, relationships with others, it's central to everything. It's central to one's quality of life, it's central to one's spiritual growth, it's central to one's evolution of consciousness, it's central to the ascension process of how high one is going to be able to raise one's consciousness. It's central to everything. It's interesting to me because, you know, there are many things I could speak about, you know, I could speak till the cows come home, so to speak on multiple paranormal subjects and, and multiple things to do with consciousness and on very many different things but so many times I'm kind of pulled back to and tracked back to this and I guess the reason being that the the main part of my spiritual evolution in my life has all been centered around experiencing through relationships um, sometimes in the most catastrophic painful ghastly fashion um, especially when they've been um, early, in the earlier stages of my life. Obviously, as I've got more conscious as time's gone on, that's less so. But having said that, the brighter my light's got, the more that illuminates the shadow within others around me. And unless they are aware of that or have got their shit together or have done their stuff, you know, it's it's very easy to see that projection kick off. But as time's gone on, it's gotten far less so because I'm mainly connecting consciously. I am hesitating and laughing at that um, because it hasn't been true um, in the last few months, um, you know, with a karmic connection that I've connected with, um, that I've connected consciously with, but that is somebody that is largely unconscious. But again, there are complexities and reasons for why that has been happening and why that happened um but largely you know the, the more conscious one becomes you start to connect with people that have an understanding of themselves or within themselves their heart energy is activated and it they're much less likely to pop off into triggers that are related to their past or past relationships or past patterns or what happened in their childhood everybody has this it's part of being human as you become more conscious you're less likely to trigger into it because you've kind of you're aware of it and you're aware of that that shit or you've done your work on it you've cleared through it um but everybody's subject to it and even when you some you know may think oh i got clear of that i sorted that one out um sometimes something will come back to haunt you a bit maybe not as dramatic as it was um, in its original form, but it, because it isn't quite taken care of yet, or there are echoes of it, or you're still holding on to some of it, maybe it's the memory of it, or the pain of it, or the wounding of it in some way. So, you know, I always end up tracking back to, to human relationships and humans in the world, because A, we are human. I mean, we may be obviously star being in our DNA as well, which we are, and we are so much more than we realize, but we are living that through the expression of human consciousness and the relationship we have within that, within ourselves, the relationship with ourselves and, and, and with other people is, is absolutely at the heart of the human experience. There would be no human experience within, without the relationship of oneself to oneself and the relationship with oneself to others. One 
really wouldn't be human anymore. It's it's parts such a big heart and parts central parts and is the heart of the human experience and it's been you know when I look at my life and reflect back you know at, at my life so far the, the most dramatic changes and leaps in spiritual growth have come all around human relationships and not all of them have to be romantic and have been romantic to do that but of course the bulk of them have been over a lifetime but they've been within um, a very um, traumatic toxic family environment for me much earlier on in my life and um, big dramatic changes within family dynamics and relationships which again you will see so many times with people on a spiritual evolutionary path and it doesn't mean to say it has to be that way it depends on one's um, let's say soul plan or we could say one's astrological chart or blueprint which overlaps with this um, as to let's say what mapping somebody comes in with so somebody's mapping someone might be getting from a to b to c to d one way through that like me and somebody else may not have to go that same way to still get to a to b to c to d do you know what i mean everybody's different but uh yeah it's something that i can't consistently get yanked back to whatever else i'm doing or whatever else i'm talking about um i guess it's something because I, again it's an experiential channel and I, I know that this is integral to the human experience and to the raising of consciousness and to ascension. And because it is something that's dear to my heart, because I have and am living it. And, you know, I have a, a huge understanding, if we say, of that and huge compassion for people within that, having lived so many dynamics of it myself now and still living dynamics of it myself now every day um you know experiencing and so i guess it's something you know very very dear to my heart and um let's say is at the heart of everything and so on that note i will love you and leave you as always take care of yourselves um i hope to be back up here again soon I am, as part of my process, and I'm, you know, hearing this from people already, and it's only, what, the 10th of January, wanting to make some, you know, sweeping um, changes within myself and uh, within my life and within the way I work, um, but also, you know, sweeping changes are happening with me all the time in the way that I... I'm connecting with people and connecting with myself and like I said before you know you'll see that from my previous video you know unexpectedly sometimes challenges can come with that and yet what I will just tell you is my overall vibration um, is one of gratitude every experience I have now those that are wonderful, those that are in between wonderful, and um, those that are not so great, um, I am grateful for, because I understand why they have occurred, and the way that they have occurred, and my part in that, and, I, and it's all a learning experience, and it sounds corny saying that, but it really is, um, even the bits that aren't so great. Um, it's a learning experience and uh, my overall vibration is gratitude. I understand it. I see it. Even when living it, I, I see it. It's hard to explain it. And I, I did try a bit in the previous video. It's like um, not disassociated. It's it's your consciousness is able to view from outside while you're also inside it and it's still your consciousness so it's almost like seeing through the eyes of your higher self or your god self um, it, you are able to see and view it like um, it's like a cinema um, so you're in the cinema and you might be in the movie that's on the screen of the cinema but you are also someone in the audience watching the movie. That's exactly the way I would describe it. Not disassociated. 
not out of your body and feeling not you're not connected quite the opposite i'm not talking about disassociation i know all about that i used to disassociate for years and if i'm about to go into trauma or i am in trauma and i've noticed now these days that if i'm about to trauma is about to hit me i disassociate 24 to 36 hours before and then it hits so i've noticed there's a pattern here over the last year when that happens so this isn't disassociation but the easiest way to describe it is when one is viewing through the lens of one's higher self, one is in the movie on the screen in the theatre or in the cinema, but one is also watching the movie in the cinema. And one is aware of watching the movie and one is aware of being in the movie. And there's disassociation, disassociation is not part of this at all. So one sometimes can become quite immersed in the movie but one is never lost in the movie one is never completely lost in the movie that one doesn't know which way is up or that one's emotions are running everything or one's triggers are running everything one is aware of being in the movie and are conscious and present within the movie in the now but one is also viewing through the lens of one's higher self and understanding what's going on and able to see and feel it all quite clearly. I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching. And um, again, 2023. Whew, this is going to be um, an interesting year, I think, globally, worldwide and for us all. And um, I don't say that in a negative fashion. It's just been full on for a while now, isn't it? And um, it's not going to stop being full on. Uh, we are on a water slide that is moving ever faster now. Um, globally in consciousness and in our own personal evolution, of course, which is all interconnected. We can't stop halfway down the water slide. Um, we can't stop it flowing. We just have to keep up with that speed, if you like, um, and just keep in that flow. And at the end of the day, we're all doing the best we can. You know, don't beat yourself up or punish yourself. Um, it's an extraordinary time for humans to be alive. You know, a, a, a quite a touching thing I feel drawn to say is just... Um, just stay in the moment, just stay in the moment and value every moment. Um, we're kind of told to value just the good moments and the nice moments, but just value the whole lot because it's all over with so fast. You know, you're just going to blink and it's done and it's gone. So value all of it, learn from all of it. The hot and the cold, what you would think the good and the bad. Value all of it. Experience it. Make your choices. Don't judge yourself or any of it. Learn from it. It's all learning. It's all evolution. It's all consciousness. Keep it all in the now appreciate, navigate, and uh, just stay in the moment. Take care. See you again soon, guys. Bye.